Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at Wyoming Presbyterian Church on this sixth Sunday of Easter season. My name is Reverend Caroline Steinman Unzaga, and I'm the interim pastor of this community. And I am thrilled that you are joining us from wherever you are in our nation and our world to worship God today. Now, before we continue on with our worship service, I would like to share just a few things of note that are coming out of the life of our community. The first is that though we are not able to meet together physically, we in this season of pandemic are still responding to the needs of our community and the needs of our world. I'd like to say a big thank you to Ann Schwenke, to Barrett Perry, to Eric Spurrier, and to our entire mission committee that put together a wonderful food drive for MENT that's meeting essential needs with dignity. Putting together a food drive for this food pantry and meeting the overwhelming need of this pandemic. Thank you also to all of you who dropped off food at the church and stayed in your cars or collected food and left it on your doorsteps for our mission volunteers to pick up and deliver to MEND. We thank you so much for your generosity during this time when so many need so much. I'd also like to note, as I do frequently, that this community is so very gifted and we are so thankful to those who have contributed to this worship service today, especially John Reese, who provided leadership of our hymns, to Stephen Shellman, our wonderful and beloved director of music who provided a wonderful solo, and also to a friend of our community, Reverend Jean Holmes, who has supplied before in Wyoming, and she joined me today during the sermon time to enter into a conversation and dialogue about what it means to engage in the spiritual life during a time of crisis. So please do look forward to that sermon time. That's all I have for our announcements. Let us now turn our hearts and minds to God as we hear these opening sentences from scripture. There is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Let us pray. O oh God, our creator, our sustainer, and our redeemer, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all else, we may obtain and experience your promises, which exceed all that we could ever desire. We say this in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our advocate, one God forever and ever. Amen. Friends, let us continue with our worship by singing our opening hymn. Let us sing. Let's be the tide that binds our hearts in Father's 
prepare our hearts and minds to hear God's word for us, let us first go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this moment, we want to listen attentively to you. Send your spirit to silence the distractions within and without. Quiet any noise that beckons us away from your voice. Help us to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his living word. Amen. The gospel for today comes from the gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Friends, listen now for the word of the Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming for you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me and I in you. They who have the commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Friends, this is the word of the Lord, for which we say, thanks be to God. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are having a special kind of sermon experience this week on our sixth Sunday of Easter. Um, and you'll notice that we've got a different format. Up until this point, you've seen me out and about on um, my property and also inside my house filming in different spots that uh, have some sort of connection to where Jesus is popping up for us during this season of, of Easter. And last week, what we looked at was the text that came from Jesus about being uh, the, the farewell discourse about Jesus leaving, um, but promising that he'd prepare a place in his father's house, this assurance that there's a place for all of us. And um, we are continuing in that text today. I thought that I would invite my good friend, Reverend Jean Holmes, into the conversation. Now, some of you know that we've been doing this Bible study on Philippians um, in which these two scholars in Atlanta invite into the conversation each week, uh, one of their friends uh, from different places in the country, and, and they discuss uh, the, the context of the, um, the text and also what it means for us today. I thought Jean would be such a good conversation partner for this particular text because not only does she have 30 plus years as a pastor under her belt, having pastored um, as an installed pastor and also in interim periods, uh, she has so many talents, but she also brings a lot of wisdom with her as a spiritual director. And I found in my conversations with Jean that um, she really brings um, a lot of insight and um, a connection with uh, what's going on underneath um, underneath it all. So this week we're looking at a text that speaks specifically about the Holy Spirit. And uh, who better to speak to that than Jean? Jean, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks so much for joining us. And you're also a friend of Wyoming, so I'm sure that uh, people are glad to see your familiar face. Um, so we've talked a little bit about this season, this pandemic, and um, you've, you've just always been a conversation partner for me anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering, in this text that we have, we're, we're looking at Jesus talking about the Father sending the Advocate, sending the Holy Spirit to be with us, and that we'll abide with the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm wondering, in, in this time of 
a pandemic, how this text speaks to you, what pops out for you? Yeah, this is a great text, I think. Um, I, I thought maybe I'd start by explaining to your folks exactly what spiritual direction is, because I don't think everybody really knows what that is. And what I'm doing in my retirement is being a spiritual director. And that means that I set up a covenantal relationship with uh, a person to um, for both of us to walk through a journey together that helps them understand where God is working in their lives and how God is working in their lives. It's a way to go deeper into one's relationship with God. Um, I'm the director. The person who comes to me is the directee. But I have to say it, I say specifically covenantal because we both listen for what God is saying and doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that the time of uh, COVID-19, the pandemic, uh, being sheltered in place, socially distancing, all of that, I think that this is a very powerful uh, time for um, spiritual deepening. I think this is a very important time mm -hmm. for us to take a pause, uh, to, to really listen carefully to where God is in all of this that's going on around us. Um, I remember so much after 9-11, there was all sorts of things all over the, the internet and uh, everywhere that said, where is God in all of this? And I think that that is a very important question, especially when we're suffering. Um, I feel that there is a um, communal kind of grief and angst uh, going on right now. Uh, we, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know anything other than just the moment that we're in right now. And when you invited me uh, to look at the scripture, to talk about spiritual direction in, in terms of COVID-19, the verse that jumped out at me was, um, first of all, was verse 17. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Um, it's very important to remember the truth of what our faith is in these desperate times. Our faith is that God is love, number one, that God is not punishing anybody. There is no punishment in any of this, that God's love is deep and abiding. And I think um, most poignant and important to me is that God cries with us. God sheds tears with us. Every time some person dies, because of COVID-19, um, God isn't removed and away from us. God is very close. And that that is the spirit of truth. That's mm -hmm. what Jesus was all about. He was about the truth that God's love is secure and abiding and always with us and never leaves us. And, you know, in a nutshell, that's our spiritual journey. Um, a lot of us don't get it very easily. We really don't want to uh, grasp onto and maybe um, fully believe that the, the depth of God's love, the strength of God's love, the power of God's love to hold us in these desperate times. And I think it's really, really important to remember the truth of that. It's so important. Yeah. I, I love that, Jean, especially because in the Gospel of John, we do hear the theme of truth um, throughout. Um, I remember being in Nicaragua with uh, a priest who uh, was protesting the um, authoritarian government down there just last year. And we asked him what verse stuck out for him. And he said, and, and the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think what you're talking about in terms of uh, acknowledging and identifying God's love and truth is powerful. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about with all of this um, is that um, we, um, we sometimes 
ask the question why. And um, that that's a question that I've gotten a lot as a pastor and a chaplain um, in my various roles of um, why does God allow this? And, and this kind of moment allows for that question that um, the fancy term we use for it is theodicy. Yes. Um, but I really like how you reframe it and in the practice of spiritual direction that not, not necessarily why, because uh, we could go down that rabbit hole forever, but where is God? It's a, operating with the assumption that God is in it with us. You know, I worked with a man once that said, um, don't ever ask the why question because there is no answer to the why question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm reminded of a, of a story that um, I used a lot in sermons when I was preaching all the time and I, I had to look it up. I didn't remember it quite right, but I did find it and it comes from Parker Palmer, uh, in his book, A Hidden Wholeness. And uh, he's talking about the word of God. And I think the word of God is love. That's the biggest word of God. And Parker Palmer told this story about a rabbi uh, teaching uh, a student and the student wanted to know why we learn in scripture that the word of God is on our hearts. And, why, and the student said, why isn't the word of God in our hearts? And what the rabbi said, and I'm going to quote it here, he said, it, it is because as we are, our hearts are closed and we cannot place the holy words in our hearts. So we place them on the top of our hearts and there they stay until one day the heart breaks and the words fall in. And I just love that image of when we get into these painful places, it's not why God, it's, it's where God, God's love is seeping into our hearts and very close to us, very dear to us, um, holding us up, giving us courage, yeah. giving us strength. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. That it's amazing um, what you're sharing because you're talking about the transformational power of love um, yeah. even in really difficult circumstances not that that um we wish that upon anybody but that even in in the hardest circumstances that god's with us it makes me think of the quote um that richard Rohr has uh, he's, and i'm i'm not quoting it exactly but he says that pain that is not transformed is transmitted um, and that it's both um, a commentary on some of the dynamics that we see in our society right now in, in terms of the pain of all of this that, that people are going through on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that there's also this opportunity for God to be with us and, and to transform it in some way so that we can also help others. Absolutely, Caroline. I'm glad you said that because the other piece about this scripture passage is I read it and I hear the dance of the Trinity in it. There's a lot of that kind of language yeah. about you're in me and I'm in you and God's blah, 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 you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> and I think that the other really key spiritual issue for us in this time of COVID-19 is the whole community aspect that Christians, faithful Christians are called to live in community. That means it's not just about me, it's about everybody. It's about what affects me affects my neighbor. And wanting to and uh, think about not being sick, uh, but I don't want anybody around me to get sick. So I'm going to wear a mask whether it's comfortable or not. I'm going to wear a mask whether it's cool or not. And I'm going to wear a mask for the other person, even if I don't feel like I need to do it for myself. There's this key sense of, you know, we're in this world, in this life together. And I think it's so important for Christians to really grab a hold of that and live into it in this situation that we find ourselves it's a high calling for us i think you know yeah 
It, that's powerful also because that's what we've been talking about in Bible study about koinonia and about the indwelling amongst the uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but also how we as a community really live um, with each other, even though we're not physically together, and, and that we need each other. Jean, I think you're, you're glitching a little bit. The, that's one of these things that we've asked uh, the spirit for help with is, is uh, navigating <laughs> all of these technological issues that we um, we don't uh, deal with in real life. Um, I think it it also just highlights um, that, you know in some ways how we we miss the way that we were together. It's an, another opportunity to to name the grief, um, to celebrate what we have, and, and to still um, step forward and look for ways of, of using what we have to, to transform things. Sure. Um, I, I'll give you the, the last word, Jean. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have the closing word. Well, first of all, I wanna say hello to all my Wyoming friends there. And um, I, I want to invite everyone to take seriously the invitation uh, by Jesus to be in deep relationship with God through him, uh, to lean into the power and the spirit of truth, and um, also to be in significant and loving and compassionate relationships with one another and the world. It's uh, just a very significant time for all of us. And um, we can do this. We can do this. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jean, for your time. And um, we'll, we'll keep talking. <laughs> it was a joy. Thank you. Okay. okay. In and out of situations That tug of war of me All day long I struggle For the answers that I need But when I come into his presence All my questions become clear And in that sacred moment No doubts can interfere In the presence
and we respond to how God was speaking to us in this space. Let us lift up those things that weigh on our hearts in our individual lives, uh, in our lives as a community, in our lives in this world. And I'd like to invite all of you who are watching on Facebook to please feel free to share those petitions in the comment line so that we can know how to better pray for you. Let us pray. God, you are our helper, you are our Holy Spirit, the advocate, the comforter. We ask that you would join us now in this space and that you would reveal to us your wisdom and will. We want so badly to follow the commandments of Jesus to love each other without any bounds. And yet we struggle with Fulfilling this commandment, the greatest commandment, and oftentimes we find ourselves stuck in patterns and dynamics of pettiness and partisanship. Our fears prevent us from really living into that commandment to live fully into your love. For just a moment, Lord, we ask that you, our helper, Holy Spirit, advocate and comforter, would come to us and quiet our minds, that you would calm our hearts, and that you would wrap all of us up in the peace of Christ. Abiding in God who abides in us, we remember Jesus' teaching to serve and to tend, to feed and to visit, to clothe and to welcome. Help us to remember all of those who are vulnerable during this time of pandemic, Help us to remember those who have suffered long before the pandemic, whose normal was also full of pain. We pray for those folks who are on our hearts in particular in this space, also lifting up those anguishes from our individual lives and worries about our greater world. We lift up those petitions in this space of silence. God, we give you thanks because you have promised that you will never leave us alone. You will never forsake us. We ask you to come now and to ease our burdens, to refresh our souls, and to make our joy complete. And now, God, as we continue boldly assured of your love and your grace and your peace, we pray that prayer which our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
in the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, now as you leave this worship service, go out assured of the commandments of God. And if you can't recite all 10 of the original 10 commandments, know that they all just boil down to love. Love of yourselves, love of your neighbor, love of the stranger, and love of your God. And if that feels overwhelming, as you go out, know that you are not alone and you weren't meant to go at it alone. You go out in the context of community, of people who love you and pick you up when you fall down. And you go out with the help of our God, the advocate and the comforter who promises to never leave or forsake you. And now as we leave this place, receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever, for which we all say, amen. Blessed be the tide that binds